Son, and Holy Spirit, let me be. Today we hear the Gospel of St. Luke's account of a demon-possessed man in the land of the Gadarenes. It's a Gospel we hear in Luke Matthew, and we hear it quite a few times throughout our liturgical cycle. So it goes to show that it is truly an event that really did happen and that the church really wants us to really understand. And what is it that we need to understand? That the devil is real, that evil is real, and that there's a great spiritual battle that is being waged here on earth that we cannot see. It's invisible. But it is a battle nonetheless. This man had the devil, a legion of them, within him, within him. And as soon as this man has an encounter with Christ, the evil demons recognize Christ for who he is, and then I ask them, what do we have to do with thee before the time? And they know that there's going to be a time where Christ defeats all evil. All evil. And Christ, as we know, heals this man. Sends, him, sends the demons into the swine and fall over. We, we're familiar with this. But what we don't know about the gospel is just how this man became possessed with these demons. The Scriptures don't tell us. They don't tell us. But I assure you what happened is what happens to all of us. Because we are supposed to resemble that gathering man. All of us, when we hear this gospel. We're supposed to put our feet to his shoes, so to speak. How do a person get possessed? Incrementally. You know, the great mystery of the devil is that he would rather us not even know he exists, that he's around. Because this is how he can do his greatest work, if we are ignorant to his power. We do not know that he's around, that's what he wants to know. He wants us to think that he's not there. Well, all along he's leading us and tempting us and deceiving us. And so incrementally, we, like that gathering man, we are tempted by the devil. And we make mistakes in our lives. One little one upon one little one upon little one. Until we live in our life apart from God, possessed by the passions of this world, taken over by our lusts and for power, sensuality, for entertainment, for money, for food. We are now possessed by it. And the devil rejoices. Because we are far from God. Because we are captive to these things. So how do we avoid this? We have to be vigilant. Vigilant in how we live our lives. Following the commandments and the virtues of the church. Not in having friends that are a bad influence on us. This is another source of the devil. People that do not have a like-minded opinion about our faith really shouldn't indulge our time with them so much and intercourse with them. We should not. We avoid the church services and the mysteries, particularly confession and communion, which St. Basil says leaves us to pray for the spiritual wolf if we cannot take it. We'll pray for the spiritual wolf if we're not receiving communion frequently. St. Basil's words himself. This is how we incrementally ourselves become possessed by the passions of this world. Do not be fooled, brothers. This is the devil. We love the world. Christ came to save the world. There's nothing bad in this world, but we misuse the world through our weakness. And the passion that we live for this age, this secular time, and we become possessed by it. So, this gospel tells us that it truly is real evil. That there are demons out there fighting for our souls as much as is Christ. But that's the good news, that we have hope in Christ. He encounters with us all the time, just like with that gathering man. He appears to us in the church, in our prayer life, at home, when we do good deeds and we follow the commandment. It is Christ's presence that is near us, healing us, sending the demons away from us. The thing is, brothers and sisters, we have to be aware of what's going on. We cannot slip into a, a pattern of sin, 
a pattern of behaviors that will leave us to be like this man, this garlic bidding man, who no one wanted to be around, who was outcasted, outcasted from the village because of how he behaved and how he was overtaken by evil. Let us not be that man, but let us know that it's possible if we do not put our trust and faith in God and continue to turn to him in repentance and in the presence of the church, encountering him in the holy mysteries that the church can only give us for our healing of soul and body. Brothers and sisters, there's hope in Christ. He will save us. He will save us. We should not be scared of the evil devil. But we should know he's real and how he works so that we can defeat him with the help of God. In regard, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.